Hello everyone. Welcome to this short tutorial from Pathology Made Simple at ILO Pathology. In today's session, we'll be uh, discussing about cholecystitis. The learning objectives for today's session will be at the end of this session, you should be able to know what is cholecystitis and know the various types of cholecystitis. We'll discuss in detail about the types, etiopathogenesis and clinical features and morphology of acute cholecystitis. Etiopathogenesis, clinical features and morphology of chronic cholecystitis and the various complications associated with cholecystitis. Cholecystitis, it is referred to as inflammation of the gallbladder. It can be acute or chronic. Acute is further divided into acute calculus cholecystitis which is because of the presence of gallstones and secondly acute acalculus cholecystitis where the gallstones are absent. Now coming to acute calculus cholecystitis. So this is a condition of the gallbladder which results as a complication of presence of gallstones. 90% of the cases it is as the result of obstruction of neck or cystic duct of the gallbladder. So it can be either due to obstruction at the level of cystic duct of gallbladder or at the level of neck of the gallbladder. Now let us understand what is the mechanism of inflammation in acute calculus cholecystitis. As we all know, the main reason is obstruction. So what does obstruction do? Obstruction results in increased intraluminal pressure, which results in enlargement of the gallbladder and thereby there is disturbance of motility of the gallbladder which ultimately leads to obstruction of venous flow and ischemia. So this ischemia results in mucosal injury. See at this point I want you to understand or recollect the basic causes of inflammation which can be you know physical, mechanical, chemical, infective and so on. Okay. So this particular type of inflammation is due to a mechanical cause that is obstruction. The second mechanism uh, which we are going to understand is because of phospholipases which are released from the mucosa, they convert the biliary lecithin to lysolecithin. This lysolecithin is very toxic to the mucosa of the gallbladder and once it is toxic to the mucosa, there is loss of protective mucus where the mucosal epithelium will be exposed. Remember, if the mucosal epithelium is exposed, you have toxic components within the bile which can injure these mucosal epithelial cells. What are these toxic components? It can be the detergent action of the bile salts. It can be the prostaglandins released from the cells itself. Even the excess cholesterol crystals can be injurious. So this particular mechanism is chemical injury. So the pathogenesis of acute calculus cholecystitis is basically because of obstruction and the mechanism might be of mechanical injury or a chemical injury. Lastly, there can be bacterial cause as well, but majority of the times the bacterial cause is usually a secondary event. The E. coli, the Klebsiella, the Streptococcus and the Clostridium are the usual organisms. Okay, All these complicate the already inflamed gallbladder the already inflamed gallbladder because of either mechanical injury or chemical injury. Why will there be an inflammation in acute acalculus cholecystitis? So when you don't have stone, what is the mechanism? See, this type of cholecystitis most commonly or mostly occur in very seriously ill patients. The predisposing factors for the development of acute acalculus cholecystitis are it can be major trauma or major surgeries after severe burns. It can be severe systemic infection or the sepsis. Sometimes even immuno, severely immunosuppressed individuals can develop acute acalculus cholecystitis. Ischemic injury is the most common reason for inflammation. Okay, Why will there be ischemic injury? Remember you have a major surgery, you have severe burns, you have sepsis. All these can result in hypotension right? and that hypotension might lead to decreased oxygen supply or reduced flow of blood to the gallbladder thereby reduced oxygen supply thereby hypoxia okay and the inflammation results so remember acute a calculus cholecystitis the major mechanism is ischemic injury now how does a gallbladder from an acute cholecystitis look like see both types whether it is calculus or a calculus it resembles 
the same except that stones are present in the calculus type on gross examination the gallbladder or the affected gallbladder is usually enlarged and tense it sometimes be very bright color or bright red color or oilaceous color because of you no know, various subserosal tiny hemorrhages you can have fibrinous exudate or fibrino purulent exudate in the later stages the lumen of the gallbladder can contain cloudy or turbid bile with or without blood with fibrin or with pus okay depending upon the stage of acute cholecystitis on microscopy all findings of acute inflammatory changes you can see it can be in the form of ulceration it can be edema of the wall it can be you know um, dense acute neutrophilic uh, acute inflammatory cells are neutrophils infiltration throughout it can be congestion sometimes it can be necrosis and ultimately it can even lead to gangrenous changes in severe cases now coming to the clinical features usually a patient of acute cholecystitis presents with progressive right upper quadrant or epigastric pain this particular pain lasts more than 6 hours remember when we discussed about the pain in cholelithiasis due to obstruction that pain is which is biliary colic which is the one which lasts for 15 minutes to 3 hours never more than that okay if it is sometimes even up to 6 hours but then the pain lasting more than 6 hours with fever consider that this particular patient might be having a complicated gallstone or acute cholecystitis fever anorexia nausea and vomiting are usually accompanied features on examination you can uh, you know uh, elicit tenderness in the right subcostal region the right subcostal region can also be rigid and that's because of spasm of abdominal muscles okay very rarely the distended gallbladder can be palpated which is obviously tender now what happens if the acute cholecystitis is not recognized and treated first and foremost acute inflammation increases dense neutrophilic infiltration is there within the wall of the gallbladder and the bile becomes infected the bile becomes purulent in the later stages and the entire gallbladder is filled with pus and that is called as empyema of the gallbladder if the inflammation continues if there is lot of congestion and necrosis and superad infection it can result in gangrenous cholecystitis emphysematous cholecystitis can also be a possibility when it is infected with clostridial infections as i told you if the content is too much and the gallbladder cannot contain it it can result in perforation and that may lead to peritonitis fistula formation is also a possibility which can rarely lead to gallstone ileus repeated attack attacks of you know mild acute inflammation can result in chronic cholecystitis and long standing irritation can result in the development of carcinoma of gallbladder now coming to chronic cholecystitis it is a most common form of gallbladder disease why does this occur this can occur because of repeated attacks of mild acute cholecystitis it's almost always associated with the gallstones hence the epidemiology the risk factors are all similar to that of gallstones the pathogenesis of chronic cholecystitis as i said it is because of recurrent mild attacks of acute inflammation due to the stones so we need to understand that the intensity of the inflammatory response induced by gallstones in different populations varies okay and it is genetically determined why do we say this because there is there is a very poor correlation between the severity of the inflammatory response and the number and volume of stones some population you know respond very minimal to the large number of stones and some population exhibit a very florid response resulting in severe inflammation or fibrosis so there is always a genetic component in determining the outcome of a complicated gallstone the morphology of chronic cholecystitis grossly the gallbladder can be of normal size it can be distended or it can be shrunken but most often it is shrunken usually it will have thick wall but sometimes it can be thin usually the serosal surface is smooth and shiny but it can be dull and the reason for these varied appearances is a reflection of differences in the degree of inflammation and fibrosis which we discussed earlier right the lumen of the gallbladder most often stone is seen or multiple stones can be seen microscopically the following features are necessary for the diagnosis of chronic cholecystitis one predominantly mononuclear cell infiltrates in the lamina propria 
okay, which can extend into the muscularis and the serosa. When I say mononuclear infiltrates, it can be lymphocytes, the plasma cells, the histiocytes, and the macrophages. Okay, anything can be there. And fibrosis and or metaplastic changes should be seen. Uh, and another important and the most common finding in tonic cystitis is you see the outpouchings of the mucosal epithelium through the wall of the gallbladder and these outpouchings are referred to as Rokitansky Ashoff sinuses. So this is a microscopic image of uh, a case of chronic cholecystitis where you can see the mucosa there and that is a outpouching which is seen in the muscularis. So this is a muscularis okay seromuscular layer so the outpouchings are trapped in the muscularis layer and these are Rokitansky Ashoff sinuses and you can see that there are lots of these lymphoid aggregates huh? or the mononuclear cell aggregate and lastly you can see the varied amount of sub serosal fibrosis so the higher magnification view of the same image which shows the mucosal lining epithelium which is columnar epithelium and that is higher magnification of a Rokitansky Ashoff sinus you can see look at the amount of chronic inflammatory cell infiltrates seen throughout look at this all these are lymphocytes and plasma cells infiltrating into the various layers of gallbladder so this is a diagrammatic representation uh, showing the mucosal lining and that's a mononuclear cell infiltrates and that's a Rokitansky Ashoff sinus and lastly the sub fibrosis so the complications of chronic cholecystitis one is acute inflammation can be super added over a chronic inflammation that is when we call acute and chronic cholecystitis sometimes you know diffusely intramural dystrophic calcification can be seen within the gallbladder wall and that is referred to as porcelain gallbladder okay risk of malignancy is always there in the long standing cases resulting in development of gallbladder carcinoma so in summary we uh, discussed about the various types of cholecystitis and the etiopathogenesis, clinical features, morphology and complications of acute and chronic cholecystitis. Thank you. Do comment if you have any queries. Thank you.